Welcome back to the DIY electric piano project. I'm going to call this one episode 13. Finally, we're back on the project. So here's the initial design of the pickups that we previously came up with. And this project is about learning as much as it is about success. And with that design, there's a couple of mistakes made. Let's look at this previous design and talk about what mistakes were made or what we can improve. So it was inspired by the original Fender Rhodes pickup and we made it all of plastic to save cost, to make it easy to manufacture, just make it all of plastic then we can 3D print it. It features a hole for a magnet and around this a bobbin creates a coil of wire and there's a tab and this allows it to be attached and positioned on the piano. My design also features two holes at each end of the bobbin to solder the coil ends to. The intention for this was for the terminals of the pickup to attach. Unfortunately, there's one thing I overlooked, and that 3D printers can be accurate to like fractions of a millimetre. But if a feature is too small, then the feature is lost. And in this case, that feature is too small, and it just didn't print that feature. So when I printed a few, I thought, okay, it's not a problem. It actually looks quite good apart from this small feature. We can just come up with something and I just glued some thicker coil wire onto the sides and that allowed me to create a terminal. An ingenious solution to the problem. Um, yeah, th there was one issue that when we put these pickups next to each other, this is where it went wrong. The pickups became too wide. If you measure this pickup, it's, it's just over 14 millimeters wide. And then if you measure, say, five octaves of a piano, and then divide it by the number of steps, not the number of keys, we get about 13.65 millimeters. I'm sure there's probably an imperial or inch equivalent that makes more sense here, but that's what we're going with. But in summary, gluing on the sides of the pickup, it doesn't work, it causes issues. So to overcome this, I'm gonna redesign that pickup. So I've moved the terminals to the tab section of the pickup so that don't interfere or make the pickup any wider. I've also decreased the length of the pickup. This is just a waste of plastic and increased manufacturing time. This extra length only adds weight and cost. We don't need it. When I shared my last video, I had a couple of comments talking about the tab at the back of a Fender Rhodes pickup being important. This is for when you voice your piano, you might want to move it around. Personally, I can survive without it and being made of plastic, the section is actually as tall as it would be with the tab from a, a metal part and you can adjust the position just by moving the coil. I actually find this a little bit easier. So that's that part solved. But then the next part is the magnet or more the tapered rivet. In the design, I decided to omit this wedge shaped bit of metal. And what will it do? And will it change the sound? Well, if it does, I, I probably won't mind. So when I posted my last video, my designer pickup, there was a few comments about will this lack of taper work and it clearly did work um, some people said it wouldn't voice very well some said it would make more distortion it would create less distortion i think it sounds all right but but there is one thing it's worth stressing that i'm not trying to recreate any piano and i'm not trying to create a fender Rhodes, a Rhodes, a Wurlitzer. i'm just trying to create what's best based on the information i've got I'm not chasing a sound. I just want to create the best sound I can, as easily as I can. And that's why we missed this taper off. But yeah, back to the taper. Playing around with the position of the pickup and the tine, I noticed something very odd and not ideal. When the tine is close to the magnet, this happens. Now, this is not good, is it? The pitch rises as the amplitude decreases. It's a really interesting effect but not ideal for a piano. How would you tune a piano where all the notes do this? So let's think about why this is. So if we look at an equation of what the natural frequency of a cantilever beam is and what it naturally oscillates at, it's a balance of its own stiffness, its mass and its acceleration. The stiffness is what the restoring force is pulling the system back to back to centre and the momentum is what holds the energy but 
if there is an external force pulling it to the center, this also acts like a stiffness. But the thing about magnets is they don't exert a constant force. As the tyre moves away from the magnet, the force drops off significantly. And as it gets closer and closer, the force gets larger. So you get this inconsistent force, this inconsistent stiffness of the time. So as it's getting smaller amplitudes, it's actually responding as if it's like a thicker section, a stiffer, stiffer time. And that's why we get this raising pitch. So how do we change this? And does the taper do it? Well, the taper kind of does help. It fans the magnetic field, so it's not as strong in this position. It's creating a weaker, more uniform field for the time to travel through. And I did only find this effect happen when the pickup and tines are aligned. And when not aligned, the pitch change is not that significant. And that's why I didn't really notice it originally. Typically, these will not be aligned when the piano is voiced. But I've already made this pickup once. I don't really want to make them a third time. So I'm going to include this feature and maybe play around with that in the future. We can find some rivets or we can just hit the magnets. I'm just going to grind the end of the magnet and see if that solves the issue. So here's one I've tried and uh, let's give it a test. Yeah, that seems, uh, that seems okay. What's your verdict? Let's switch between the two. So my original design and my new design. So we just need to repeat this process. And if you're interested in trying a similar project to this at home, the key is just designing a process, not necessarily the product. You need to create many identical parts that all react and respond the same so that you can create identical feeling notes. If you do choose 3D printing to help you with a journey like this, there's so many colors and different filaments. Look, I've gone for a, a color changing one for the, my redesign pickups. Look at these, the gold to purple. Absolutely beautiful. Right, that's it for now. The next part, I'm going to look at the times. There's going to be a couple of changes of that. I've had some help from other people across the web. And I think if you've enjoyed the project so far, you will enjoy the next part. So subscribe, hang about, and uh, yeah, till next time. Thank you.